good to be back here, you guys. I'm having a huge week. I just became an uncle for the first time, which is really great. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I had nothing to do with it. So that's pretty cool. It still feels good to be congratulated, though. I like that a lot. I like being an uncle. It's very cool. Less cool, I come from a very religious family, and there are a lot of people in my family who are concerned about me being around the baby because I'm gay. Uh, which is so offensive to me because I can do so much better than some stupid baby, okay? Like, let's get one thing straight. Look at me, all right? That baby wishes, okay? My beautiful niece could do so well, all right? I see what they're saying now, all right? This feels like a wild time to bring a child into the world. Lots going on. The Nazis are back. People are wearing corduroy, Nazis are wearing corduroy, you know, just like lots in the air. I feel like in the last couple of years, a lot of people were like, oh, we have a black president. We did it. We solved racism. And now this entire period of history we're currently living through is like the end of a horror movie when you think the killer is dead and then a hand reaches out of the grave and grabs you and it's like, gotcha, bitch, this is a franchise, you know? Like, you thought this was over? We got 10 more movies. We haven't even gotten to racism in space yet, you know? It's never going to end, ever. <laughs> with all that in mind, I've been trying to be kind to everyone, really connect with everyone I meet, which is a mistake. Uh, <laughs> it's bad. I was in a cab recently, and uh, the driver was playing a Spanish-speaking radio station, and I said, this is my chance. I'm going to connect with him over this. And I said, sir, you have to tell me what is the song that's playing on the radio right now. It's so beautiful. I have to know. And he flipped around, looked me dead in the face, and was like, it's an Oreo commercial. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no! <laughs> so I was humiliated, just opened the door, flung myself out, and I'm dead. Uh, that's where I find myself now. I love this job. It's a great job. I get to fly a lot, which is a big perk because I love planes. I just flew back uh, Seattle to New York. And on that plane, every single member of the flight crew, every flight attendant was male. And I was like, where the hell am I, Spain? You know, like, this is <laughs> so stupid. And to make matters worse, the flight attendant that was helping Aros, he was a male flight attendant who was both straight and rude. And I was like, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> like, if you're going to be a male flight attendant, you can either be gay and rude or straight and good at your job. You know, like you can't have every option available to you. It's just not fair, you know? Like, thank you. I feel like you guys should be glad that we allow you in the skies at all, you know, because everybody knows that the skies were given to gay men and straight women centuries ago when we were tricked out of the land. Lesbians, of course, were given the seas. <laughs> bisexual men are pilots, and bisexual women are captains, you know? That's just history, OK? Read a book. I like reading a lot. <laughs> I like being gay. <laughs> I think it's great. I think I'm crushing it. I recommend it to everybody I meet. Um, <laughs> Not everybody thinks I'm doing such a great job. There are a lot of gay men who don't think I'm a very good role model for the community. I had one come up to me after a show in Phoenix recently, and he got in my face and was like, you're everything that's wrong with the gay community. It's gay men like you. You're the reason my parents don't talk to me. And I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, but you're the only gay person your parents know, so <laughs> this feels like it's a you thing. <laughs> like, I bet if your parents met me, they'd be jazzed, you know? Like, so excited, like, oh my god, we didn't know they could be cool. <laughs> we thought they were all lame virgins like her son, but oof, what a relief, you know? Little update about me since the last time I was here. I'm still alone. Uh, <laughs> it's rough. I think dating is really hard for me as I push 30 because I just don't have any room left in my brain for facts about other people. I just don't care. Um, I went on a first date with a guy recently who told me that he was born in London but was raised in Tampa. And isn't that the saddest story you've ever heard? Like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What a tragedy. You could have had everything. You could have had the best accent imaginable. Instead, you got HPV from the ocean. You know, like, what <laughs> happened there? That's like our generation's version of forced sale baby shoes never worn. You know, like, this tells a whole story in one sentence. All right, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you.